Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here, kicking off the night of uh, WWE Survivor Series 2022 coverage. Uh, basically watching my first WWE pay-per-view, honestly, in a while. And I can honestly say that War Games is what brought me to the table uh, because of the fact that I don't watch a lot of Raw, I don't watch a lot of SmackDown continuously, even though I kind of Try my best to follow through social media and clips and things like that. Um, I really had no clue what was going on tonight. And the one thing that I was kind of fearing was the fact that they would have the women's match open the show. And they would have the men's match close the show. And everything in the middle, I'm going to have no clue what the heck's going on. Um, you know, they, 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 I, I heard throughout the day that the women's match was rumored to start the show, so I made sure I was here. I watched the pre-show to try to get as much information as to what I could to get us to the table. And uh, the opening match ended up being uh, Bianca Blair, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Mia Yim, and Becky Lynch going up against Damage Control uh, with Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley. I can honestly tell you the one thing that I did not like about this match is that it kind of seemed like it was thrown together. I know that I'm contradicting myself talking about the fact that I don't really watch a lot of uh, week-to-week TV, but it was a three-person group who added two more people, one of them who's in a feud with her own faction, <laughs> um... Uh, going up against just basically five baby faces. The five baby faces I understand because the meaning of what War Games once was was the four horsemen against WCW. It was, you know, the baby faces trying to right the wrongs of everything that the four horsemen had done over the year and they just wanted to get their comeuppance to make sure that they stood up on top. Um, it, it didn't make sense to me. That uh, Rhea Ripley, who's uh, in in the group with Finn Balor, um, that you know has her own feud where they brought in Mia Yim to join the OC, and why they're not in some sort of like Survivor Series mixed tag, they had to have their fight in this fight. Um, I, I know the War Games has been five on five. You know, basically they've changed the rules in the past of matches. I think that, honestly, they just sort of put damage control in there against uh, Becky Lynch, Bianca Blair, um, and Asuka. And I think it honestly would have been a better match. Um, I didn't see the coin flip unless it happened at some point during the uh, pre-show. Um, and, and I just missed it. But um, they did even fight the fact that they were going to have a coin flip or anything like that to see you know who got the early advantage um, the, the heels, oh, hey, come on, I just needed a couple minutes here, bud. Um, uh, baby, uh, basically, the heels got the advantage, um, and, uh, you know, the, the fight was on. Um, I, I thought that when Nikki Cross came running down, she is kind of the, the wild card, um, factor, uh, on the roster. She was the one who threw in a lot of weapons from underneath the ring. We saw trash cans, trash can lids, kendo sticks being added to it. Bailey, when she came down, she brought in um, a ladder. She brought in a table um, uh, to, to to fight the match. But uh, the match the match was, was good. I just didn't really understand, you know, what they were fighting for. And for the second pay per view in a row, I guess I don't understand the rules. To me, War Games has always, besides for those last few in WCW, War Games has always come to a finish. When one team is forced to tap out, uh, when they wave the white flag and they say they don't want to get you know beat up anymore. I remember when it was NWO against the Horsemen. Steve Mondo McMichael didn't want to see Ric Flair get beat up anymore, so Mongo uh, was the one who quit. Um, and you know, it just just over you know the past years, you know, the, I mean, the past years, <laughs> past centuries. <laughs> I guess you can say that's that's always how they have said it's going. And then even at one point. When, um, shoot, when, um, where was it? Nikki Cross was climbing to the top of the cage for no apparent reason. Um, we had the announcer, uh, say that I thought I could have swore he said, he said it's not by escaping the cage, it's by, uh, submission. Uh, but the match ended, 
uh, with a Becky Lynch pinfall. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just me and old old school wrestling. That's just the way that I always thought it was, and I, I guess I didn't really hear the rules say that you can you can have a pin in this. Uh, but I did like the fact that you know once um, uh, Becky Lynch got into the ring, they they announced that war games had begun. Uh, there was no changing of the rules, basically, of, um, you know, that they could get an advantage by eliminating somebody before um, all, all 10 members of the match uh, were in the ring. So we'll see what goes down with the, the rest of the show. Hopefully it's going to be pretty good. Women's match started off, got me pretty hungry uh, for the main event. Uh, just kind of really seemed like it was just kind of thrown together. That's just me. Second match of the night, honestly, on uh, Survivor Series 2022, AJ Styles against Finn Balor. I can honestly tell you that um, I remember, what was that, 2017 TLC, uh, when it was supposed to be uh, the Demon Finn Balor against Sister Abigail Bray Wyatt. Um, the match was heavily hyped uh, to be a big part of that show, and then... Uh, Bray Wyatt came down with, I can't remember what it was, but that whole pay-per-view ended up being really in, uh, um, uh, riddled injuries. I think, uh, Roman Reigns ended up being taken out as well, replaced, uh, by, uh, Kurt Angle. Um, but, uh, what the hell was that? It was like the whole thing just rewound. I don't know what the hell's going on, but, um... I don't think that I did that, but um, I, I I really you know they're they're basically treating this match like they thought it was an instant classic um, that they were uh, Peacock just sucks. I have no clue what the hell is going on right now. But ever since they've moved to Peacock, I know that they've made a ton of money. But uh, I'm probably gonna have to restart this crap. Uh, they just haven't done it. But uh, you remember back to that show. It was put together, that match, uh, last minute. Um, I can't remember if they had a SmackDown in order to uh, pump that match up. It was just basically put out on Twitter uh, that they were changing the match. But I think we all knew at that point that we were going to get some sort of an instant classic. They treat Finn Balor. Uh, they, they love to bring up that, that uh, you know, uh, fact that he was the first ever Universal Champion. That was SummerSlam 2016. Minus the one time when uh, I think he went up against Brock Lesnar at a Survivor Series uh, for the championship. He hasn't been anywhere close to that title since. He's, he's had some runs with I think the IC. He's had a run with the United States Championship. He's always sort of a featured guy when he's not uh, injured. Uh, right now seems to be the biggest time they've built him up. Um, being the leader of Judgment Day. I'll tell you this. The other guy that's in this group, not named Dominic Mysterio, what the hell's going on with that guy? I mean, this group was basically built around him and Edge. I, I don't know what led to the point of Balor replacing Edge, but um, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just don't get it. Dominic Mysterio was thinking about this today. Dominic Mysterio, who's better? Him or David Flair? It seems like Dominic gets um, a better um, reaction um, uh, being out there, and they've been giving him a little bit better angles. But um, I, I haven't really seen him wrestle much in matches other than those Mysterio tag matches. And uh, I'm not quite sure who I think is better at this point, honestly. David Flair in WCW looked at as one of the worst wrestlers of all time, was only really there uh, because of Rick. But if you look at that time period, Rick wasn't in the, like, the best graces uh, with the brass at WCW. So I don't know why they were pushing David so much. Maybe they were doing it hoping that Rick would uh, you know, sort of change his mind um, about you know, being sort of a, you know, uh, I guess a non-locker room leader at the time. Kind of only looking out for himself because uh, he wanted to, to do right for his son. But yeah, I don't know. That's something that I've never really figured out. But this match here... Um, you know, the, the, the guys on the outside, they got involved at one point, uh, but to me, not enough high flying action. Um, we had, um, Finn Balor get the win, but, um, uh, I don't know. 
I don't think the match was great. That, that was just me. And what the hell happened at the end of the match? Uh, it was like the whole thing rewound really fast. And uh, I never got connected. But I just I just turned it off, turned it back on. And it looks like they're pumping us up for uh, Liv Morgan. No, not, the match isn't Liv Morgan against Ronda Rousey. Because Shotzi's going against Rousey, Ronda Rousey. I don't know who Liv Morgan's going up against. But she's got a match. It's coming up next. One of the greatest rebuilds in the history of WWE has just been completed in only two weeks of action. Uh, many times people like me who uh, sit here and talk about what they saw when they were watching wrestling uh, that night basically said that Austin Theory was done. He would find his way out of WWE uh, within a couple months after he's failed to cash in on Seth Rollins after the beatdown by Bobby Lashley on Monday Night Raw just two weeks ago. Um, the, the guy has had a major rebuild. Uh, he came back from the, from the loss with everybody saying everything negative about him, um, saying that, um, you know, no more... Uh, me, 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 no more um, selfies, just going to be focused on, on, on wrestling and, and winning and beating people up. And uh, Austin Theory became the United States champion. Um, uh, basically, it is his second run uh, with the belt inside of the company. Um, but I think this is going to be uh, a, a, a real run, a good run for him. I mean, he, he won this belt. From Seth Rollins in a match with Bobby Lashley in there. Two uh, WWE as well as Universal Champions. Um, you know, these aren't bit players. Uh, these, these aren't the uh, the Dolph Ziggler's or the Miz's of the WWE. These are guys that have main, main evented pay-per-views. Been in the ring with uh, Brock Lesnar. Um, you know, I often wonder. You know, so many people point to... Austin Theory going to WrestleMania and having a match against John Cena. Um, it's been so close so many times with Cena and Theory, um, you know, tweeting at each other on Twitter. Um, basically keeping that in our mind. If, if Cena's going to come back and he's going to have a match, I guess it makes sense to have a match against the guy that so many people say is the prototype of John Cena. In my opinion, um, if, if you want this guy to be the next John Cena... You can't have what happened in the opening bell of this match. This match, the bell rang. Austin Theory ran out and hid underneath the, the ring uh, for Bobby Lashley and Seth Rollins to start the match and beat each other up, which all in all is a, is a pretty smart way of a three-way. But John Cena, I mean, we, we've seen John Cena team up with a partner and fight the entire Monday Night Raw roster. Um, there's no fight too big. For Cena and Austin Theory thought the best offense in this match was to run and hide, like he's the honky tonk man or something like that. Um, but Austin Theory, uh, you know, he got the uh, the surprise one, two, three. Um, but like I said, this is going to be the real run um, that that they're starting out for him. I'm seeing uh, more than likely him and uh, Rollins, or maybe him versus Lashley on the next pay per view. Um, and, and then we'll, we'll have to see where we go from there. Um, but you know, the, the road of the rebuild of, uh, Austin theory of being what Triple H wants him to be is on no more, uh, Vince McMahon lackey, just the real wrestlers here. Let's see if we can get him to WrestleMania and John Cena. That was a good fucking match. That was that, that makes me glad that I sat down, uh, to watch uh, Survivor Series. I ended up sitting here and watching the whole show. I know that these Survivor Series matches probably went about 40 minutes to an hour apiece, I'm guessing off the top of my head. The only other two matches uh, was uh, Finn Balor and um, AJ Styles and the Shotzi and um, Ronda Rousey match. But I, I can't remember the last time I watched an entire WWE pay-per-view. But uh, that was the most of WCW feels that I've had, honestly, in a, in a long time. I think that uh, whoever sat down and, 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 and traced this out, I'm sure they wish they had Arn Anderson still under uh, contract in WWE as one of their producers. But uh, I know that Triple H had to have been a part of this with how much he loves um, 
you know, old school wrestling and, and just wanting to, to, to maintain a piece of the past, even though he's moving into the future. I can tell you that um, um, the one thing I didn't like was the one thing I didn't understand because I didn't watch SmackDown was they had Roman Reigns come out last. And that makes the most sense with him being the champion and the base name that was in the match. But with him being on the heel team, that means the baby faces had to have the advantage uh, throughout the whole thing. And uh, I, I think it's the first time and only time we've ever had um, a War Games match where the baby faces had uh, the early advantage, uh, having the, the two on one to uh, basically start um, the show. Um, you know, really good stuff. Uh, I mean, anytime you get the bloodline together, um, I can honestly tell you that it was the first time that I saw Solo uh, have a match in WWE. I've seen pictures and uh, clips of him, uh, but uh, I didn't know if basically he was living off of uh, the name uh, of the bloodline or if he actually deserved to be there. I know that he was a champion when he got called up. He had the belt for one episode of SmackDown and then he ended up giving it up, but um, what a really good match. I mean, the the, the whole basis of the match uh, revolved around Sami Zayn, uh, who we all thought was going to turn on the bloodline, or the bloodline would turn on him with the storyline uh, happening the whole entire um, night. But, uh, you know, it, it really all came down. Roman wasn't even involved in the finish, now that you think about it. And, and I'm wondering if where they go from here is... You know, because of what happened with Owens and Sammy, it's almost like an episode of The Sopranos is that, you know, he was over there. He was talking. We needed him for the war. But now that the war is over. They can sacrifice him. I wonder if that's where they go. They take him out um, on SmackDown and he's no longer going to be a part of the group. But uh, if the bloodline, you know, Roman Reigns is your double champion, was ever going to have a, a chink in the armor? Um it had to be tonight. I mean, this was the match that was made for them to lose. There wasn't a championship on the line. Um, it, it, you know, there wasn't a, uh, you know, if they lost, they had to give a, a title shot to somebody. Um, it made the most sense for these guys to get in there. Um, I tipped my hat. I, I thought it was awesome uh, for the Brawling Brutes uh, to be in there. Um, you know, we all thought when Butch uh, got called up to the main roster and they changed his name that Pete Dunne was was done for and he was going to become some sort of a comedy act. But, um, you know, he was the one who actually got to, be, to start the match. Um, Drew McIntyre got some shine. You know, they were, they were putting him over as, as a guy who main evented WrestleMania, won a Royal Rumble, a two-time champion. Um, and then, honestly, Sheamus looked like one of the biggest stars. I, I, it would look like he has to be the guy that's going to be going up against uh, Roman next. I mean, I thought the way he was being put put out there, he was he looked stronger than he did around WrestleMania 28 10 years ago. Um, he, he looked like he was a real star in there. And I know the Braun Brutes sort of came together and, um, you know, people have loved him, but... Uh, I didn't know they were as popular as they were right there. Um, damn good finish to this match with um, basically um, Sammy uh, and Kevin Owens having their stare down. Um, you know, Kevin Owens yelling at him, that, like, this is who you think your family is. You're standing up trying to get Sammy to turn and see the light out there. Uh, of course, everybody knows Sammy and Kevin Owens came up together. Um, they, you know, they were... A tag team on the Indies who broke into Ring of Honor, um, pushed their way up, and then of course Sammy, you know, came to WWE, and then when when um, uh, Kevin Owens came, turned on him uh, the first night and uh, set up them having a match for the NXT Championship where Kevin Owens would win the belt. Um, but uh, two guys that you know a lot like Marty and Sean. Uh, that you will always, you know, compare and contrast their careers. But tonight was the night. Uh, Sami Zayn got uh, got the one up on them. I mean, you know, how many times did they put these guys out there and said this is the last time they're ever going to have a match? And the fans come back and say they want to see them uh, fight forever. Um, so the bloodline gets the win. 
Really damn good match. It stands up against a lot from WCW. I'm going to go out of my way to make sure I see um, what Jim says um, about the match. And uh, I, I hope he loves it. Uh, I understand, you know, the women's match wasn't, you know, the best of all time. But that yeah, men's match stands up. WCW quality right there. Peace out. Great show, guys.